Aquarius. Hi, how are you? Great to see you. Just in time for your Aquarius. May 2020 reading. Um, good to see the subscribers. Let's get that ready. Get in there. That'll do. I um, love to see the subscribers and I uh, enjoy uh, conversing with you um, over the comments section, of course, each month as well. And of course, a couple of you Aquarians I have had private readings with, haven't I? I won't name you, of course. Uh, but if you would like to have a private reading yourself, just check out the information in the description box and it will show you how easy it is for that to occur. Now, we are going to do a couple of things this month. The first thing I'm going to do is take out uh, for you, Aquarius, a what I call a shadow card. Now, the reason why I call them a shadow card is that for me, they really do work to access the energy which is bound up in that aspect of us that normally doesn't see the light. Now, there's nothing malevolent about that. There's nothing untoward about the shadow side. As I say, it's just that bit that doesn't ordinarily see the light of day. And, um, and it makes up a large part of us. And what is that? Why don't I try and, and give up on any last vestiges of vanity that I might try to draw upon and use my glasses. And there is Father Sky. Now, I'm also going to use some tarot cards for you. And then I'm going to use three playing cards. Now, the tarot cards, actually, these tarot cards came from, well, I, I obtained them from a lady in San Francisco who is an artist. And I admire her work. And I wondered what it would be like were she to have uh, a deck, uh, a tarot deck. And lo and, lo and behold, this is the tarot deck. There's the King of Cups. Uh, well, these are a couple of things, whatever they are, the moon and the four of discs. Yeah, and uh, this is what she has come up with. And the imagery in it, I, I just really enjoy and I think that you will enjoy it as well. Now, it, now I don't know much about art. Um, I know about food and wine and well, I eat a lot of food and I drink a lot of wine. Well, I have to eat a lot of food, you know, I'm six foot three. And I try to stay reasonably fit, so I I need the food, and I need to I need to try and stay reasonably fit because I drink the wine. You know how it works. So here we go. What are we going to have here? Of course, the um, the Muslim audience now is having a heart attack, saying that what are you doing drinking alcohol? And I said, well, you know, that's just the way it is. I can't be as perfect as you, but I do have great respect for your religion. I must say and your way of life and good for you. It's we all get to the divinity via different roads. I think there's the five of staves. Now these staves look like they're alive and there's the 10 of discs, which for you, I have to say, is a, gee, another fascinating image there. It's probably a really good card, but we shall see what it looks like with the others around it. I'll get a look at it in, a, in just a, in just one second when we have a close look at them, it will, it will all start to gel. Now, this two cards are Ace of Diamonds, the Two of Spades, and which one is gonna come? I'm gonna take the one from underneath it for some reason. And the Ace of Clubs, excellent. All right, why don't we get together, look at these cards, and uh, together we'll see what they mean for you for this month. All right, why don't we start with this card here, and it is Father Sky. Now, what am I getting from this? Well, Father Sky is the spirit of the night and and the day, the moon, the stars, and the sun. He represents all that is above the ground, out into the endless universe and beyond that, which we cannot see. Father Sky is the seer of dark and light, the good and bad, yet with his eternal wisdom he does not judge. I'm getting a feeling that there's a, a situation around you now which requires that you be fair in making your decisions as people are looking to you for guidance and support. Be respectful in your judgment and don't neglect to see the entire picture. 
There is much more information you are not aware of at this point. Make some more inquiries and listen to your intuitive feelings in an attempt to gain further insight into this situation. Your judgment in this matter will last beyond the single event and will influence many people around you. You are seen to be a role model by others and have gained respect due to your past actions. Take your time in this situation and give yourself a few more days until you make your final decision. I think it will be worth the wait. Now, this card, I think, because this was a father, why don't we have a look at this father here? Because if anybody, in some respects, gives the impression of being a father figure, certainly it is this one here. And I have to tell you, I have a lot of Aquarius energy around this card at the moment. I think a Pisces could also be important to you this time. I think that there might be something involved in your life where, well, excuse me while I just bash my head against the camera there. I'd have to sue. Who would I sue? I'd have to sue myself and I would probably lose. Now, I've got the feeling here that there's something to do with commitment. Either you are not receiving a commitment from somebody else or you are wavering in a commitment that you are considering to make yourself. This is a man who has issues with commitment, I think. He's amiable and passive, and I think you'll be attracted to excitement. You may well have an unsustainable enthusiasm to some things. And interestingly, I think that you could well be quite sensitive during this period I think what we can say here is that, well, he is the Lord of waves and waters, the king of the hosts of the seas. And it's saying to you that you must have an effect of ensuring that you manage your affairs properly at the particular time. You know, I see him as being made up by a number of different influences, this card, and I'm getting a sense of, well, I'm getting a sense of the first decan of Aquarius here, which is, I think, the moon. And so there's a period, I think, where you may feel uncertain of yourself and feel that you can't get what you want in love and relationships. Some period of self-doubt and the requirement to seek reassurance from others. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that. You may even feel that you've got a lack of, of energy or inspiration. Now, you might think to yourself, oh, I'm being lazy, but I think it might also be a necessary respite from a more active and creative time, which is to come. So you have, I suppose, some time out now where you've got um, the ability to gather your strength before you make inroads into some other projects. This is also talking to me of great inner contentment and great happiness, though, interestingly, which I think is going to radiate outward from you to enrich those around you. And uh, this may be emotionally, or, or it may be because of the actions that you take. I think, how can the interchange in your relationships be enriched? And have this thought in mind that I am finding the contact I now need. Well, let's have a look at uh, who else he has sitting above us and below us. As above, so below. That is to say that the... As above, so below. That is to say that really the manifestation of our spirit in space and time actually reflects the, the movement and the machinations in the spirit realm. Now let's have a look at this five of staves. Now if we look at this character here, then I suppose maybe it is the prince of staves, otherwise known as wands in other decks, 
A person here is grappling with a number of staves which look like branches of a tree and yet he has almost the 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 depiction of a dancer, someone who's very fluid in motion and yet he's grappling and he's not giving up. This crescent and this seeing eye on the back here, however, seem to me to suggest that perhaps there is the or the risk of losing perspective in relation to something. The risk of losing perspective in relation to something. What do we have? Well, the astrology of it for me is Saturn in the first decan of Leo. You know, that 23rd to the 23rd of July to the 2nd of August. This is about competition. This is about strife. Now, Saturn in the first decan of Leo, well, in my long experience, uh, too long perhaps, Saturn and Leo don't get on because Leo wants to be creative and express itself while Saturn can often come across as being cold and dense and desiring to set boundaries and limits. Leo then is here, which is a fire sign, is also in a fire suit being the suit of staves. And this five here, for me, mystically, has a very close connection with the fiery planet of Mars. So what we have is a lot of fire going on here, but Saturn coming in trying to dampen it all down. So the astrological energies really are in discord, I have to say. So I think what we're looking at is some degree of unrest or disagreement. It may well be an internal baton, battle that you are going through in your own mind. Problem solving. There can be sexual arousal and activity with, uh, associated with this energy, particularly where the card is placed below the King of Cups, because the other thing that I'll say about this King of Cups here is this, and the lesbian and gay communities can make the necessary adjustment, adjustment, but this is a person who is attracted to the opposite sex, and the opposite sex is attracted to them. So it's a period whereby you are going to be very attractive to other people. Now, what you may find, though, is that you are in competition with other people. You may find that you are in the middle of a conflict, a tension, or a competition, as I say, that's a, impacting on your ability to do or to close, if you like, what it is you want to have done. You might find that there are people who you are competing with who look the same as you, who are also very attractive as you are. You may find that people have similar skills and uh, similar resumes to the type of thing that you have. So there's a degree of com competition going on here. People who've got the same sort of qualities and gifts that you have. Yeah, similar qualities and experiences is what I'm getting. Now, you may not have had to face the fire of competition before, but now you will learn what it means and, in particular, what it requires. I think this also encourages you to understand the differences between people of other cultures and backgrounds. There is actually, interestingly, a, a centre of consciousness which many people may refer to as an angel, which is associated with this energy and where it's placed here. And the angel's name is Jerethel, one of the 72 names of God. And it substitutes for the word Lord in a book of the Old Testament called the Book of Psalms. And I'm pretty sure it's Psalm 140, verse, verse 2, which says, Rescue me, O Lord, from evil men. Save me from the lawless. Well, meditating on that verse will remove the dark forces' presence from your earnings and its destructive influence from your life. The light is now your silent partner. You will be surrounded by protection. So go step by step, take everything a little easier and say to yourself,
I am more and more capable now of expressing my feelings and my creativity in relationships and work. Okay, where are we going here? I'm going to go to this card actually because this has got something to say. And what does it have to say? Yeah, the ruler of the flux and reflux, the child of the sons of the mighty, the moon. This is Neptune in Pisces with Venus, exalted. So Venus is very, very strong energy around here. Very, very strong. Now, when we have a very strong Venus, we can tend to believe what we want to believe when we are under the influence of Venus. I'll just make that point. But Neptune in Pisces. Well, Pisces is very much associated with the subconscious, with emotions, with intuition and artistry. And for me, this is the last of the major arcana that I assign a zodiac sign to. Neptune's watery depths are associated with dreams, with visions, and the imagination, which links it in pretty well, I think, with the qualities of the moon. But I think that what this is saying is that, and it might be coming from this period of competition that you have here as well, is that you may feel that you have some mental confusion, and, and it is, I think, something of a difficult period for you at the moment, where you lack clarity. I think you will have increased psychic awareness during this period, I have to say. I really do. And I think what's important here also is that something may well be deceptive. Is it a reality or is it an illusion? I think this is suggesting a time when something in your life is not as it appears to be. A situation that is deceiving. Now, you may feel lost in life and unsure about which way to go, lost in the dark. You know, one, if you get in some unfamiliar place and it's dark and there are no signposts and you can't work out which is the right way to go. But, you know, this energy can also represent the shadow self, that is, that subconscious or hidden self, which makes us up, probably the majority of us up. Now, it's quite possible that you have been harboring negativity, you have suppressed, or, or you may not even be aware of it. But there is a need now to release this destructive energy. And where this is placed up here, and with this father figure looking directly at it, I get the feeling that this negativity could be something which is a, as it has arisen because of or as a result of events occurring in childhood, and they are impacting on your current your current uh, thoughts, your current ways of expressing yourself and undertaking things. Do you know, I think what is important with this card when it comes is that I think it's important also to realize that you, you are going to be gifted in turning difficult situations into positive events. And again, this competition card could be coming up. There can be events that are doing it. So you're going to take something which is difficult and you're going to make something positive. You're going to work through difficult situations. You may be working through a difficult relationship. Um, you could well be a romantic wh whose desires are not to be deceived or deluded by others. I think there's a time also when really you, although there is this possibility, and now that I've mentioned it, for this deception or something which is unseen, things not appearing as they seem to be, you will have little tolerance for self-deception. Now, you know how I said that when Venus is exalted here, we can come under the spell of Venus. She's like a siren beguiling us with her beauty and clear-sightedness is by no means one of the things that results from the influence of Venus. But now you have been pointed to that energy. I think you will have little tolerance for self-deception or illusion. I think you will also have, I think you will also have a great deal of personal magnetism during this period. And this is obviously also 
coming along with here, because this is looking at it again, where there's the great degree of attraction. You have that physical attraction to other people that's there. Yeah. Sometimes I think you can be placed in positions of having to make choices between a couple of issues or situations or opportunities or, or, or directions that are ahead of you. But you should say this to yourself, that I enjoy making important decisions. I value honesty and integrity in relationships. I like what is mysterious within me and within others. I express myself fully and openly like the moon, where it's responsible, of course, for you to do so. And through choice, you can change your experience. And even if there is this sort of feeling of something dark around you, remember it is always darkest just before the dawn. Let's have a look at the four of discs. I'm here, four of discs. Let's have a good look at you. There you are. Sheen focus. Well, let's look at a couple of the imagery, shall we? Here she is growing from within a tree. There are three orbs around her. This one, I assume, represents a child growing within her. This one looks like a female's ovum or egg. This thing here, to me, represents sperm. And if we look down here, I would take that to be her genitals. She is crying here, tears. Her breasts are dripping with milk. And I notice that her genitals with this drip of moisture here are wet as well. So she's very fertile. She's very ready. She's very ready for procreation and for development, for gestation, for making things happen. She is the lady of earthly power. Now, where she's placed in the middle there, and with these other cards around her, I see the sun in the third decan of Capricorn, at 13th to the 21st of January. Now, Capricorn is a feet on the ground, eye on the prize sort of sign, isn't it? It really is. And I think what we can say about people in Capricorn is that, you know, generally they have a realistic, grounded approach to life. And, um, and this can be seen, you know, really, no matter how difficult their astrological birth chart seems to be. But I think that what we have here for you during this period is, with Sun in Capricorn, which is so good, is really the the establishment of strong foundations, stability. I think you're going to have a tight rein on your budget and you're going to be financially cautious, probably saving, saving for the future and protecting yourself financially. I see here the sun energizing Capricorn's earth because Capricorn is the, the first earth sign. And it energizes Capricorn's earth and material and benefits, material benefits and power are the result. The sun in astrology is also the symbol of your dynamism or power and Capricorn is the application of that power in a useful way. So I think that what we see here is that we have um, manifestation, character, integrity. It's such a good card that I'm going to say some other things about it. There is a sense to me that this is a very materialistic card. And I think that what there is here is that life for you is going to be orderly and secure, but it might seem to be somewhat barren. And you may be discontented with how things are going along at the moment. Now, with this sort of angry looking color in the background here, this sort of reddy color, um, which is really the color of the sun, I suppose, you may feel as if you kind of think, oh, look, I'm I'm, I'm in a desert uh, if you become too constrained and emotionally not fulfilled, or if the spirit is missing from your life. 
I think though that this tree really can be your sanctuary where you find your find your inner voice or it can be materialistic and something to show off to others. You may be being tested not to give away your personal power and I think you'll have a need to discriminate about where and to whom to say no. Sometimes you'll need to have these branches keep other people out to protect your inner sanctuary and so that you don't give too much of yourself away. But it is talking to me about, about, even though it may not be apparent to you, there is actually a financial and material security around you. And it's an important time for you to have solid foundations, isn't it? I think that slowly but surely, um, well, look, you're willing to work for what you want and you'll have c confidence in applying yourself to the world. You are seen as someone who is a dependable person who acts with integrity. And I do really see it as being a, uh, at, after a little while, the fulfillment of, it really, it, it really talks about the fulfillment of your material goals. Offer yourself in service with love. Let's have a look at this 10. I love the 10s. Well, in a sense, because the energy is coming to the end of the suit and is getting very flaky, all 10s, in a sense, are deaths. But this one is a play-acted death. The king here holds the spear under his shoulder, rather than say through his heart, and, and he smiles as he pretends to faint or to die. Now within him there's the picture of the queen and the winged horse inscribed within him, and a black serpent twines around the end of his spear holding a flower in its mouth. The promise of continued life. This card depicts the ultimate goal of the suit of discs, material power and wealth, and with it, presumably, the ability and clear-sightedness to enact positive change in the world. Nevertheless, I've got to say, with uh, this card being drawn here, this is Mercury ruling the third decanate of Virgo, incidentally, that 13th to the 22nd of September, which is fantastic, because in ordinary astrology, Mercury actually is the ruler of and is also exalted in Virgo. So good communication skills, which is Mercury, and good, like, good organization skills, which is Virgo, Putting those two together, there will be success and abundance that one may have, right? So what I'm getting the feeling of here is that really the, there is a feeling around you of richness, of abundance. It's possible that you could have a lottery win, you know? It's talking about a supportive and tight-knit family. It's particularly good for those who are involved in a family business because the family business is one which is going through some difficulty at the moment and it is going to come out the other side where there will be movement towards material wealth. Sometimes it can refer to someone who's accumulated riches, but nothing else, you know, no heart, no spirit. And I, I, I'd say here that you should, on a piece of paper, perhaps write down all the qualities which constitute your inner riches. Do you know about your inner wealth? Do you share it genuinely? Um, I think it's possible that you may well be attracting to you people to become a part of your life. Say this to yourself, I am internally and externally rich and free and enjoy everything thankfully and in surrender. Well, let's have a look at some of these cards quickly. Actually, I'll go from the top first, the Ace of Diamonds. 
The Ace of Diamonds is a, is a message to be, to be received about love or business, which is going to be good. There's a desire for money here with you. It can sometimes mean a marriage proposal because I'm seeing a ring about it. And um, there's a change or a message about money, which is, which is usually very good for you. Now with this two of spades here, I think it's saying that there is a difficult choice that you are going to have to make. Um, don't let your need for friendship blind you to the truth. Um, what else could we say about it? I think that there is a need to have others in your life at the present. And perhaps, you know, there's a feeling of being alone or, or, or you, you want to get more people in, that you want to have a greater uh, physical attachment to other people. Um, sometimes it could refer to deceit. Um, you may hear of somebody else's infidelity or a separation, which will be quite uh, unusual for you. And there is the break in an important process in your life, but it's one which is going to be good because it's it's got the sitting that ace of diamonds on top of it. So it's going to be beneficial for you. And this card is talking about creativity, love and new beginnings. That's the way it is for you this month. Well, there we go, May 2020. And I really enjoyed doing that reading for you and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Do you know you were fantastic during that reading as you always are. And the only thing that's left for me to say really is this, and that is that you are a legend and I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, bye for now.